Welcome to our discussion on the Indian GCC growth story. I'm Gautam Srinivasan and today we are going to talk about a sector that has been generating $46 billion in revenue annually and is projected to double its GDP share to 2% by 2030. We are referring to Global Capability Centres or GCCs which have grown by 11% between 2015 and 2023 becoming indispensable to their parent companies by integrating global expertise with local talent. Now one of the most prominent GCCs in India is Optum India, the Global Capability Centre of United Health Group or UHG, a Fortune 4 company committed to helping people live healthier lives and helping make the health system work better for everyone. With over two decades of presence in India, Optum India delivers quality outcomes across the continuum of healthcare. Now to explore how GCCs are shaping the future of this sector, we have with us Uma Ratnam Krishnan, Managing Director at Optum India. For a bit of a background in her role, Uma sets the company's vision across the country, helping teams deliver distinctive value across all businesses. Now, Uma started her working life as a diplomat with the Indian Foreign Service. Prior to joining Optum, Uma served as the CEO and MD of Barclays Global Services. Now, over the last three decades, she has had senior leadership roles in NatWest in the UK, NZ Greenlays Bank, HDFC Bank and Polaris Software. Uma is a management graduate from the Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore and followed this up with a woman in leadership program at Harvard Business School and a strategy program at Wharton. And we're looking forward to her insights into the strategies and challenges of GCCs in India. So let's have a conversation with Uma. It's time now for a deep dive into India's GCC ecosystem with Optum's Uma Ratnam Krishnan. Uma, great to have you with us and thank you for, for giving us an overview of what's going on. Let me first start on understanding what is Optum India because it, there's a fascinating story about these capacity centers which are transforming global business. I want to know what is Optum doing? Sure. Uh, first, uh, Gautam, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, Optum India is a health innovation global capability center of United Health Group, uh, a Fortune 4 company. Uh, we actually create value in an integrated model across the entire health ecosystem, cost, quality, and most importantly, uh, innovation, right? Thinking about how we can do every single thing better uh, so that we make things better for the people that we serve, which is primarily our mission, is to actually help people live healthier lives and making the health system work better for everyone. As Optum India, we've been in India for more than two decades and our presence is scaled and we have a lot of capability and we are therefore a very integral part of the enterprise, cutting across all of the areas uh, that we work in. In India, again, we're present in five cities, uh, Noida, uh, Gurugram, Hyderabad, Chennai, and Bangalore. Uh, lastly, about our people, a little bit about our people. I think we are very um, keen to get the best talent in and for our people, we give them a proposition which is about uh, caring for them, connecting them, and growing together. And in the community we operate in, where we live and work, we are a force for good, uh, collaborating uh, with people who do work in the community. At the end of the day, that's what matters. Yeah. And uh, taking forward some of the points that you've mentioned, especially the fact that, uh, well, GCCs are bringing together talent, innovation, and cost benefits for the HQ. And of course, yeah. For, yeah. for today's world where everything is global, that is more and more important. Considering the presence of over two decades, as you mentioned, in India, I want you to give us this bird's eye view of how the GCC ecosystem yeah. has evolved in India. Yeah, I mean, it's been a fascinating journey. India has been at the heart of this GCC ecosystem growth, right? Uh, it's grown over the last 20 years, but the interesting thing is the pace of growth continues. I mean, we're today as a GCC Global Capability Center ecosystem, we're about 45 billion and that's actually expected to grow up to about 110 billion 
uh, you know, uh, shortly uh, in the next five year, five to seven years by 2030. So the pace of growth continues. Uh, also, 20% uh, of Forbes 200 companies have GCC in India. That's expected to grow to about 50% by 2030. Uh, what's driving this, right? Talent is actually what's underpinning this growth. Uh, talent in many ways and in many areas. Now, what's also important is in this evolution, uh, we've seen many more global and senior roles in India, and that's going to continue to grow. So what that means is leadership roles and global roles into India, we're expecting to have about 20,000 roles uh, by 2030. And, and for me personally, uh, about 30% are expected to be women because GCCs drive, uh, you know, inclusion, diversity and all of those. So which is great for senior and global leadership out of India. Let's come to the footprint of GCCs in India, right? Our seven cities, uh, Bombay, Pune, other than the five I spoke about earlier, which is the NCR region, Bangalore, Hyderabad, Chennai, uh, probably has about 90% of the footprint. But what's also interesting is we are now, with the growth of GCCs, we're now starting to see um, the second level cities. I wouldn't call them second level, but cities other than these also actually starting to uh, grow uh, the GCC footprint. For example, you have Jaipur, you have Indore, you have Ahmedabad, you have Coimbatore, you have Vishakapatnam. The new hubs. Of the new hubs, right? Because at the end of the day, we have talent everywhere. And so that is again sort of fueling uh, the actual growth of GCCs. Um, and, and, you know, we have 1.66 million people today employed in GCCs. That's expected to grow up to 4.5 million again by 2030. So, you, and, and about 50% of GCCs globally come to India, as in, you know, 100 out of 150 come to India for a footprint. So, you can actually say that, you know, the GCC system and is now starting to be actually recognized uh, as a, a separate, uh, you know, uh, segment capability, uh, which drives many things, right? And of course, it's evolved and we can talk a little bit about how it's evolved uh, as well. And talking about evolution, you know, at, at the end of the day, it's unlocking capability, unlocking possibility. And as you mentioned, the talent reach is now finally going to be actually implemented, where for tier two, tier three areas, as this ecosystem evolves, the talent which was latent at a particular point in time now becomes on stream. All right. Taking forward this point on evolution, we've been hearing a lot about GCC 4.0 lately. If you can demystify this for us and play it into how the ecosystem evolution is now going to go to the next level with GCC 4.0. So uh, let's take a two decade step back, right? Rewind. Yeah, <laughs> rewind to a couple of decades ago. The GCC uh, concept really started as a cost arbitrage or an opportunity at, for lower cost, uh, you know, uh, capabilities. Quickly, that then evolved, once you actually establish proof of concept, that quickly moved into can we deliver at scale, which is, you know, repetitive, not missing what you said you would miss, doing this day in and day out, but at scale. Now, that was the next phase. Then it quickly moved on to uh, a third phase, which was really about managing portfolios, which is not just one kind of process, a multiple a set of processes across multiple sets of businesses. So it's about portfolio. And that was when we started seeing global roles in India, like leadership roles in India for certain areas. And then we are currently sitting at uh, what I would say 4.0, which is really uh, we're translating into high value work, impactful work, innovation and transformation hubs right now let me unpack that a little bit on what innovation and transformation yeah what does that mean right so and, and again it's important to understand that this is uh, across many industries right and we and actually GCCs uh, do a wide range of types of activities software engineering technology analytics operations processes R&D and across a very wide ranging um, set of industries, you know, starting from pharma, healthcare, financial services, retail, aerospace, oil and gas. It, it, it sort of, uh, you it's know, everywhere. it's everywhere. So it cuts across industries and spectrums. At 4.0, uh, companies, global companies are actually looking at their GCCs to be their transformation driver, right? 
to actually create new products, to actually innovate, uh, have breakthroughs in terms of the way they do things. R&D leading to new product and revenue streams, uh, driving some of that large transformation across uh, the companies um, sitting out of the global locations, right? So those are the kind of things that are actually starting to happen. And like I said, given that it is spread over so many industries, not everybody is at 4.0, mm. right? And that's an important thing to understand. Depending on when you began, depending on which industry you are, you're potentially, you know, you could be in any of these phases, but clearly when nobody is in phase one, because anybody who comes in now knows that delivery at scale can happen and all of those good things. But it also, and, and there were some front runners, right? Banking financial services grew very quickly. Some software companies or product companies grew very quickly in the global capability center model. So it's a bit of a, a mix, but what is important here is the evidence and the demonstration uh, that GCCs can become pivotal to transforming and innovating for global businesses. It's an idea that works. Yeah. That's why we are yeah. seeing it so widespread among yeah. all these sectors, right? Yeah. And banking, financial services has always been at the forefront of innovation. But looking at the fact that healthcare, aerospace, all yeah. these traditional sectors yes. are picking it up yeah. uh, and taking it forward is, yeah. is heartening to yeah. see. And as you mentioned, starting from a cost arbitrage paradigm to delivering excellence at scale to where now it is driving the engine of innovation yeah. and value for enterprises truly we are we are just yeah. scratching the surface right now yeah. in terms of value what would you say to that yeah no absolutely because we can see the because the opportunity uh, for innovation is huge in some industries it's more than others mm. right so if innovation is fundamental i'll give you a couple of examples of how you know some of the key levers we've used in optum in our global capability center one and this is really important because it's about being customer centric now healthcare is personal right each individual is different uh, and and we're seeing uh, that more and more uh, consumers of healthcare services want to be uh, you know able to understand and manage their experience who's their care provider who do they want to go to how do they get information about their health records etc cetera, etc cetera. so one of the big things that we do and that's how you can actually create innovation value which is make sure that our people understand the consumer mm -hmm. right the consumer centricity of the work that you're doing who's the consumer you're delivering to so this is not just about okay, we'll do something and get on with it. It's about really understanding what the consumer experience is. The second part is that uh, GCCs have a unique strength, which is they have many functions sitting together in the global location for the global company. For example, we have technology teams, we have data teams, we have finance teams, we have operational teams. So this is a great opportunity to bring to bear the power of all of them together mm. and to actually solve a problem and come up with an innovation, right? So how do we get tech and ops to work together? How do we get data and analytics and the operations teams or the product teams to work together? And they actually result in very powerful outcomes, mm. right? So actually leveraging the full power of what you can uh, bring to bear to a problem, right? That's something that we've done, uh, we are conscious about and we do, uh, you know, regularly. Uh, the third one is really about nurturing our talent. I mean, simply put, you know, India's talent story, we know we're, you know, more than two thirds of the population is young. Uh, we have among the largest STEM population in the world. Uh, but also in a um, GCC like um, Optum, uh, we have the ability to not just hire STEM talent. We also mm. have the ability to hire non-STEM talent, you know, life sciences, physical sciences, clinical, pharma, because those are different mm. types of talent. But our fundamental job is to get the right talent in through the door. And we make sure that we get the right talent for the right problem. And the last one, really, really important if you need to get to phase four or 4.0 of the GCC model, which is to work very closely with global teams. Because we need to, we are part of the organization. We're an integral part of the organization. So the more we're connected with the global business teams, understand the business and day-to-day -day work with them, that's when we can move the strategic objectives of the organization forward in a, in a 
in a way that's completely uh, integrated. Omar, um, you have summarized the definition of a perfect enterprise where all the cogs are working in yeah. tandem in service of the customer because we truly are in the era of hyper personalization at scale for the customer, whether it's healthcare or whether it's yeah. other industries. And the fact that GCCs are unlocking capabilities for a lot of the global players to tap into India's demographic dividend and in a sense build their enterprise value to the customer, it takes it forward from there. Now, taking that point uh, into consideration though, I want to understand from you, considering you've been a leader with vast amounts of experience, what is the leadership mindset required, both globally and in India, to sustain this growth? Because at the end of the day, you need a top-down approach as well in terms of evangelizing this whole process. What would you say? Look, fundamentally, uh, I've seen that leadership is about uh, getting the right talent, inspiring them and, you know, buying into the vision and delivering what we can. Having said that, there are some nuances in the GCC world uh, and, and, you know, I worked on both sides. I worked on the commercial side like a proper regular front-facing business and I worked in a GCC. And there are some nuances in this business which uh, have certain specific asks of leadership uh, in global locations, right? Uh, first and foremost, fundamentally, it's about understanding the business and getting the right talent, right? Because it's not one business. A large GCC or a scale GCC supports many of the global businesses of that organization, particularly for, so you, you need to have an understanding of what's the right talent to bring in for the things that need to be delivered, right? And obviously make sure that uh, give them the tools, give them the training. We spend a lot of time on training because you know you need to understand the global customer, the global business. So make sure that we have all the tools and invest a lot in it and then just get out of the way and get them to deliver, right? That's fundamental. However, the kind of leadership that you need could depend on the geography, on the scale, and on the complexity of these uh, processes or areas that uh, you support. Um, so the complexity will also drive the kind of uh, leadership that you will need uh, in a particular global location. Could you expand on that? So for example, if you take a, a, a healthcare company, we probably provide, uh, you know, we support a lot of our uh, business areas. One is the actual healthcare delivery side. We also support uh, what we call Optum Insight, which is technology, data, tools, managed services for the healthcare ecosystem. So that's a lot of technology and data and analytics. So the kind of talent you need there is different. On the other side, we have the Optum um, Care, which is clinical uh, talent, right? And then we also have pharma talent. So it's a it's a combination. And then we have the, uh, the, the insurance side, which is uh, the United Healthcare side, which is claims, uh, you know, processing. That's operational talent. So it's a combination of operational expertise, health uh, knowledge, uh, and then data, technology, and so on. So you, you bring a, a wide range of talent together to work on this, right? Mm -hmm. So the ta the, as leadership, we need to be clear about what kind of talent you need to bring in, right? Then two other things I'll call out, which is other than making sure once you get them in, uh, make sure that you you know clear the impediments so they can actually because in a global concept mm. uh, in a global organization it does need a lot of working with the global partners mm. all right to make sure things happen and that needs a lot of influencing skills and a lot of uh, you know uh, ability to engage and create relationships at a global level two other things I'll call out one is for a GCC leader it's really important to have a much more broad-based uh, global social perspective, broader perspective, mm. right? Not just a single market. Not a very localized yeah. single market yeah. perspective. Uh, because you need to understand how global businesses function. You're working in different domains. You need to understand, uh, you know, global talent comes in diverse packages, right? Mm. You can't deal with a talent sitting in, you know, US or wherever else in the same way that you potentially uh, manage uh, talent sitting here. So you need to understand that the diversity and the, the business uh, across the board, and that's really important. Personally, I also feel for GCCs, uh, and I say this quite a lot, which is you need something called a growth mindset as a leader, right? Which is 
things are changing so quickly you need to be agile and keep learning and keep and just be curious about learning blue sky thinking. yeah completely just you know okay how do i solve this problem maybe my last time i did it could have been different something could have moved on here right mm. but just that ability to have a growth mindset all right a growth mindset and a global mindset yeah. that's how you take yeah. the gcc revolution forward uh, before we sign off on our conversation uh, uma your recommendations on on growing this ecosystem even further because as you mentioned earlier 45 billion currently 110 billion dollars and that still looks less considering the yeah. potential that gccs can bring to the table for global enterprises what are some recommendations that you would suggest uh, for growing this ecosystem better sure Uh, look, in terms of numbers uh, as well, the number of GCC setting up, uh, you know, capability centers is growing. Today we are at about sixteen hundred there or thereabouts. We're expected to get to two thousand four hundred to two thousand five hundred GCCs, which itself is a significant growth over the next uh, by twenty thirty. Now, to continue to add value and to continue to drive value out of the global capability centers, I think there's a few things that. GCCs need to think about and focus on on the other side the environment needs to help us along whether it's policies or infrastructure or whatever so i'll talk i'll, I'll kind of cover both of those um, uh, you know the key points in both of those first the GCCs themselves when we're moving towards what's innovation transformation uh, it's really important to understand the areas of focus and potentially set up maybe a center of excellence or you know um a, hu- a incubation hub for example cloud capability for example digital capability r&d in certain areas right so if the gccs themselves um focus on the areas that they want to actually drive value out of depending on the company the business they then need to set up those uh centers of excellence uh you know is is the thing i would say to kind of drive continue to drive that value second thing is um the talent um you know more than half our graduates come from non seven cities that i spoke about initially and to continue to build on this scale we need to make sure that we develop uh, another set of locations from which the gcc can it's already started mm-hmm. but we need to continue to do that you know for skill diversity lower costs because that is important i mean it's still a, a driver right so lower cost uh, uh, acquisition of the right talent and making sure there's some uh, areas where you can actually expand into at lower risk and so on so the second level of uh, locations that um, we need to start looking at the third for the uh, gccs is about building the culture because mm. this is a model which is a front to back model you know you're fully integrated with your global company so you need to build the right culture uh, and the li- right uh, approach and business knowledge so that it, the more you're connected mm. the more you work front to back the better your outcomes will be mm. all right and the last one is to keep talking about and demonstrating the value that uh these locations can actually uh deliver mm. right uh on the other side to help move this along uh we would absolutely require support and help whether it's in policies whether it's in incentives whether it's recognition uh because the gccs play a big role in terms of you know contributing to the economic human capital innovation environmental uh, capabilities practices global practices so uh we need um continued help and support in terms of uh, policies and infrastructure from the locations and the governments mm-hmm. uh you know in the states that uh, we operate in so yeah that would be sort of a summary to say i think there's a lot of opportunity uh and uh you know we need to do the things we need to do to realize it miles to go before we sleep and Correct. it's amazing to see the transformation that is taking place both in the back and in the front office and it's perfect that there is an ecosystem solution now for tapping into india's demographic dividend and making sure yeah. that it is actually useful for not just the india growth story but for the global growth story well that was the deep dive into the gcc ecosystem with uma ratnam krishna uma thank you so much for joining thank us thank you nice conversation thank you gautam thank you so much well that was uma sharing her insightful perspectives on the growth and impact of gccs in india now her expertise has shed light on the transformative potential of this sector and how it is poised to double its share in india's gdp by 
the combination of global expertise and local talent as highlighted is indeed driving remarkable innovations and value creation. Well, her vision and leadership in steering this growth is remarkable and it's clear that the future of GCCs in India is bright, promising significant economic contributions and career opportunities. That was a special presentation brought to you by Mint. I'm your host, Gautam Srinivasan. Thank you to all the viewers for tuning in. Have a great day.